All right, we are live. Welcome. We are starting in a couple of minutes here. So people will probably start to come on board here in a little bit. All right, feel free to write comments or questions as we go. I'm going to type that. Let's see, write comments or questions as we go in the comment box and I will see them. All right. So we are doing these lovely Mardi Gras themed cookies here. I think you can see them. Um, I'm excited about this. Mardi Gras, yay! It's only a few days away. <laughs> um, we don't really do much here for Mardi Gras. Um, I know at like Universal Studios they do like some kind of party. Um, but it's interesting that I will talk about like the Fleur de Lis or like a king cake with the girls that that bake for me and who work uh, for me, but they don't really, they didn't know what a Fleur de Lis was, so I had to like show them like this is a Fleur de Lis. And it dawned on me that before I moved to Louisiana, I really didn't know anything about Mardi Gras. I mean, we um, went through New Orleans when I was about 10 years old. And that was all I remember. And it was actually like a couple of days after Mardi Gras, like it was on a Thursday. So I remember I was only 10 years old, so I don't remember like a whole lot, but I remember walking through <laughs> the streets and it was just like all of these beer bottles and cigarettes and it just reeked of alcohol. And I remember asking my mom, like, what is going on? Like, what happened here? I didn't really understand, you know, what was going on and like in hindsight I remember my parents saying yeah we probably should have come like a few days earlier <laughs> uh, but you know I mean it's just interesting the culture and just like Mardi Gras is such a big deal in Louisiana but here in Florida is like people a lot of people don't know and like if they're younger and they've kind of never been to Louisiana they don't really know what all it entails. So I just remember my girls being like, what's a king cake? <laughs> what's a fleur de lis? Um, so, you know, very interesting, just culture difference, you know? So um, welcome to Jackie Sweet Schoolhouse featuring these Mardi Gras cookies. And my name is Jackie, as always. Thank you for joining. If you are joining live and you're taking the class along with the kit, that's great. Um, thank you for purchasing a kit so we can follow along and do this together. If you are just hopping on and you don't have a kit, whoops, uh, that's fine too. I'm always happy to have y'all, so hello. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining in. If you are taking the class on YouTube pre-recorded, again, as always, feel free to go at your own pace. Uh, pause as needed and fast forward if you are ahead of the game and need to go faster. That's the beauty about the pre-recorded class. Um, but if you are taking the class with the kit, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, feel free to say hi uh, in the comments. I do like to interact a little bit with you <laughs> if you're taking the class. Uh, it's a little bit different than an in-person class, of course. Um, where I don't really see you, I just see your comments. So if you do have any questions as we go along, feel free to comment, ask questions, I will see them and I will answer as soon as I see it. So without further ado, um, if you have your kit, go ahead and uh, open it up. If this is your first time, I'm just gonna go over a few basics. Uh, if this is not your first time, you're like, I'm a pro, I've done a bunch of virtual classes with me. Uh, you kind of know how this is going to go. It's uh, going to be a little bit of introduction about icing and how to hold the bag and how to uh, outline uh, first and then uh, we'll get into the flooding 
and then do the detailing at the end with a little break in the middle. It'll take about uh, two hours <laughs> to decorate four cookies. Um, it doesn't typically take two hours to decorate, but with instruction, of course, it does take that long. Um, and you will find that it does take a long time to decorate cookies, uh, maybe not up to two hours, but that is why people will pay for these because they don't have the time <laughs> or the patience uh, to decorate these cookies because they do take some time, some patience, some technique. Uh, so that is what I'm here for is just to teach you how to do these particular designs and you will learn skills to do other things in the future if you ever want to do this on your own, which is super fun but that is why we're here okay so you have a kit if you're if you purchased it uh, so if you notice we got some new stickers and business cards that is Jackie Sweet Schoolhouse which is the new sister company um, of Jackie Sweet Shapes which is all my cookie decorating classes I'm super excited about so uh, make sure you have a pair of scissors before we get started all right, so we'll need a pair of scissors. You'll want to lay out your little um, parchment paper uh, just because it does kind of get messy. So you'll have that as your little workstation. And then if you haven't already, which I have not, <laughs> you're going to take your icing bags and just kind of massage them a little bit. So why do we do that? Well, I made them on, let's see, Sunday. So uh, sometimes what happens is that icing, the color in the water will kind of like pull away from the icing base, which is predominantly powdered sugar and meringue powder. So because it was in transit and it hasn't really been used for a little while, just a few days, uh, sometimes that color can kind of like separate. So you're just going to massage it each one a little bit to kind of get that color incorporated, especially the purple because it is a dark color. Um, I used a lot of the purple to get it to be as purple as it is. So you'll just want to massage it for about 30 seconds or so, um, maybe a minute. But definitely the the ones that are that don't have a one on them are the ones that we're particularly looking at for mixing them together. So you're gonna notice as I'm doing this, um, I will talk. So you're gonna notice that there are some that have a one and some that don't have a one on those icing bags. The purple is a little hard to see because it's a dark color, but you will have a Sharpie line. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, you will have a Sharpie line on one of them and no line on the other. So that is just to distinguish between the thick and the thin icing. So if you've taken a class with me before, which I think most of y'all have actually, uh, then you just know that that is going to be helpful to know that the one that has one on it is thick icing. So you're going to outline and detail with that. You always start and end with the one that has a one for the most part. You're always going to start with the outline and then end with the details of the thick icing. All right. So you should have your icings all massaged. We are going to start on the worksheet, but make sure that you have those little toothpicks that will be in your box. So they might be like on the side. I know I put them in there um, <laughs> in packaging, but they might be a little hard to find. So make sure you use these because especially when we're doing this little uh, Louisiana, we're gonna need those, those little toothpicks. So pretty. This one's probably my favorite design so far of this little group, but okay. So we have our worksheet and we're actually going to start with the white icing. So we want the one that has a one on it. Remember you always outline with the thicker icing. So take everything out of your box. You probably have a lot more space than I do right here. <laughs> uh, I'm dealing with a limited amount of space with everything going on, but just have your cookies out, your icings, everything, and just put them on your table. Uh, but we will start with the worksheet and the thick white icing that has a one on it. Okay, so when it comes to the icing bag, um, before we cut it, I'm going to teach you how to hold it. 
And again, you maybe already know how to do it. Uh, you may have a different way of holding the bag than I do, which is fine. I get a lot of comments that people who have arthritis, uh, like my grandma, for instance, she can't hold the bag the, the way that I do. And so she told me, she took my Valentine's class and she just said, yeah, I just kind of <laughs> held it whatever way the icing was able to come out. That's fine too. Uh, what I do is you're going to have your hand kind of under the knot, but it doesn't really matter as much about the knot as it does wherever that icing is. So like if you were to push down that icing, see where the knot is, Yep, and see where that icing is. I'm gonna have my hand above the icing, but I'm gonna have it where my palm and my thumb are. So you're gonna have it into your palm here, and then right where that thumb. So your thumb is like right above that icing. I like to tuck my thumb in like this and then just relax my fingers over that thumb. I used to go like this, uh, but I found that if I had it here, I could get a better squeeze with that thumb there to kind of squeeze that icing because what we're trying to do is we're squeezing from the top down to get the icing. So we really want to be right at the top and just letting that icing squeeze from the top down. Okay. Um, your other finger is going to be used as a stabilizer. So if you're really shaky or, I mean, all of us kind of need that extra <laughs> stabilizer just to steady our hand a little bit. So your opposite finger, pointer finger, is going to be right there to steady your hand. Okay, so as you're moving, you'll be like this. See that? Okay. All right, now, cutting the bag. If you've done this before, you may have already cut it. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Um, but if you have never done this before, make sure that you cut smaller than you think you need to. So we want to be that little piece of plastic, the triangle that pops off, you want it to look about the same as a number two pencil lead. So that width, you want it to be the width that you're cutting off is gonna be about like a pencil lead on a number two pencil. So we cut that little piece off. You can always cut more off if you need to. But the little piece that we cut off, I don't know if you can see that, is pretty tiny. Not like super, super tiny that you don't have a hole, but not too big. Okay, so after I'm cutting it, it's gonna be kind of flat. So then I'm gonna take my fingers and just run it so that I can see a hole. Run it along that seam. And I don't wanna be able to see a hole. So that when it comes out, it's going to be not a flat line, but just like a circle here. Okay, it's really coming out. <laughs> I think I made it not as thick for y'all, um, which is fine, but it also, I would do a few times, it'll probably, like after you do a few of them, it'll probably harden up. It's just the original like part at the end that might be a little bit of watery because of transit and all that. So we're going to work on the lines first. Make sure that you are not, yeah, that's better. It got a little bit watery at the tip. Make sure that you are above like the paper and your tip of your plastic is not touching the paper. We want to be just kind of letting that icing drag onto the paper. So we're about a centimeter or more up off that paper and then every time I stop a line like here I'm going to dip down and pull up so the only time I really like touch that paper is when I dip down to end the line so when you start and you stop a line that's pretty much the only time that that plastic tip can touch that paper then you want to be up off of the paper and just letting that icing kind of drag on that's gonna give you that nice clean line, clean barrier, all right? And it's not gonna be like smeared because if your plastic tip is touching as you're moving, um, you're not gonna get that height in the barrier. You might get kind of like a smeared sort of icing line. So we really wanna be letting it just kind of drag, all right? As you turn, 
corners, a little bit tricky. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of manipulating it in the air. So one of the advantages of me being up off the paper is I sometimes can like push and pull the icing like before it like falls onto the paper. So we wanna be up like right now, I'm probably, I don't know, a couple centimeters up off the paper. And then that allows me to kind of like manipulate it as I go, I can kind of force the direction of it before it lands on the paper. So the question is, is your icing covering the black line? And if it is, then that's great. You have the right hole. If you can barely see that icing line and all you can see is the black print of the paper, then you're gonna wanna cut a little bit more off. If you just see like all icing and it's just this huge blob, <laughs> then you cut it off a little too much on that tip. So make sure that it looks like this, like you're completely covering the black line and I'm not talking about like perfectly mirroring the tracing, but just that the width of it is enough to cover this black line here. That's what we're looking for. Um, now, we are going to do the whole rest of the worksheet, including the hearts and the circles, because if we get a little bit more practice with this, most of the time we feel better to do it onto a cookie. So the same outlining, the same movement is exactly what we're going to be doing on the cookies, just getting a little bit of practice here. So. Um, for the circles, I'm going to say for today, <clears throat> and there's a reason for this, let's just do the outer one here because we're going to do something new that I haven't done in a class before, but it'll all make sense in a little bit. So just do the outer line here. Remember to use that finger to control the movement. And then of course, just be mindful of like how you're holding that icing bag. Are you getting a good squeeze from the top? Are you squeezing that thumb into your palm and not just using your fingers, but really using your palm to squeeze from the top down? And then that finger, and then just kind of making sure that you're up off that paper and just letting it drag onto the paper. The um, heart, the heart is um, a little tricky, but I'm going to show you all. So when you're like changing direction or like, uh, for instance, a square, you have four lines, but you're changing direction each time that you hit the new line. Same thing here. It'll happen when you get to the top, then you kind of change direction. At that moment, if you're doing a line and you change direction, you always want to dip down with your icing bag, like that starting and stopping concept. You'll kind of touch the paper and then lift up as you change a different direction. So if we're doing the heart, I like to start at the bottom and then we move along just as we would, but then once we get to this corner right here, we dip down and then we pull back up as we switch direction. So you kind of like slow down, you stop, you kind of squeeze a little bit extra, you dip down, then you pull back up. So that might not make sense <laughs> as I'm like saying it, but if you're doing it, hopefully you'll kind of see what I'm talking about and you have two hearts to be able to practice and if you want more, then uh, you can always wipe it off with your toothpick, which is the case with um, any of your cookies as well. If you mess up, just wipe it off and do it again. Sometimes people are afraid of that, but when you're in this stage of outlining, this is the best time to correct any mistakes and really like the only time, to be honest, <laughs> that you can just wipe it off and get away with it. Sometimes I can get away with um, 
doing that to details. I have made mistakes, of course, many times. And sometimes I can wipe it off or put a little water and like brush it off with a paintbrush. But for the most part, this is the only time where you can really like completely have a clean slate, wipe it off and do it again. So you just want to make sure that there are no gaps in the barrier, no holes. Like if you did connect like your circle, for instance, if you connected those to the starting and the stopping points, um, make sure that they're together and that they're not separated because you want all that thin icing to go inside and not to seep under or creep out of your barrier. So just always remember that you want to have that closed barrier if you're putting that thin icing inside. All right. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. I usually only do the one circle and the one heart just because. <laughs> uh, so keep your worksheet when you are finished. We're actually going to do something to the circle and the heart to kind of get a little extra practice. Um, with the flooding. So I will explain that and then after that we will just start decorating the cookies. So um, feel free to interact with me on the comments. Is um, everyone excited about Mardi Gras? <laughs> I found these. These are from uh, last year from like a little photo booth that we had and I found them today and I was like oh yeah Mardi Gras but I am wearing some beads and um, yeah, happy Mardi Gras. <laughs> um, I'm not doing anything. I mean, maybe if I was in Louisiana, but I'm doing this class with you, which is fun. And uh, my friends actually, I've got two friends here. One of them, uh, she used to live in Louisiana, but she's taking her roommate and they're going and doing the whole Mardi Gras experience and her roommate has never um, done that before so she was telling me how excited she was about that and she was she like literally doesn't know what to expect so she was asking me for some advice um she's like where should we, what should we do where should we go uh, so hopefully they'll have a lot of fun all right so that should be enough time for y'all to have finished what we're going to do is we're going to practice with our toothpick and our thin white. So your thin white, remember, does not have um, that line, the Sharpie line on it. We are gonna cut off a little bit. It's only going to be a little bit more than you cut off with the outline. So again, we're not talking like a crazy big hole in this, but just a little bit bigger than the outline one. So when you go to flood, we're actually going to utilize this worksheet and we'll do the circle first. A lot of times for beginners, what I'll say is go as close as you can to the outline, but don't go like right up to that outline because then you can use your little toothpick to sort of like swirl and push it to the outline. So what that does is it allows you a little bit more ability, like sa a safety net not to over flood. So as you get better and better, you kind of know, like this is how much icing goes into the circle without over flooding. But when you're a beginner and you've never done this, you really don't know that amount. All you know is that you want it to be like a pillow on top of the cookie and you don't want to see the cookie underneath, or in this case, you don't want to be able to see that black line that was underneath. You want enough, enough icing in there that it's completely covered. However, um, sometimes if we go right up to the outline and we don't know that amount, we can tend to over flood. If you have done this before, I would say if you've taken a few classes, <laughs> I'm going to say you're not a beginner. And so if that's the case for you, then what you're going to do with this heart is you are going to outline, I mean flood right to that outline. And then you'll swirl in and you basically don't even need to use your toothpick, maybe just a little bit and it's done. So kind of get familiar with it. If you're wor really worried about uh, over flooding, then 
just go like kind of close to the outline and then use your toothpick to push it towards the outline. If you feel good and confident uh, of not over flooding, then you're gonna go right to that outline and you're gonna swirl it in with no gaps because you don't wanna sit there with the toothpick forever. You only wanna be there for max like 30 seconds on a regular cookie using your toothpick. And you can also pop any air bubbles um, in that time. Okay, any questions? Not yet. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the real deal, the cookies. The Hopefully the flooding and the outlining helps a little bit when we're actually going to the cookies. The first one we're going to do is going to be our Louisiana shaped one. Okay. So this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the outline with you or like you'll do it with me. So you'll want your thick white and we'll want to get that Louisiana cookie out. We'll do the outline together. Mine has a whole bunch of cracks in it, but that's okay. Yours do not. <laughs> Um, so we'll do the outline and then I'm actually going to do <clears throat> the flooding all on my own and I want you just to watch me um, and then like I want you to see what I'm going to do with these lines to make them all um, scalloped or however that pattern is. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that and then I'll let you do it on your own. But I want to do the outline together. And so what we need is that thick white. We're gonna outline the whole cookie. There are a lot of turns and corners in this one. So remember what I told you about the heart. Um, you don't have to do it all in one fluent motion. You can like do a line, stop, pick back up. You don't have to like do it continuously if you are not comfortable with that, but it doesn't matter where you start as long as we just outline the whole cookie. But we do wanna get as close as we can to the edge. And then of course, just being mindful for of all those little turns that we have. <laughs> and if we do start and stop like I just did, I'm stopping till the next uh, line. We just wanna make sure that those lines are connected and that there's no gap or hole in between them. So this one will probably be the trickiest as far as the outline goes. And you can always take breaks. Sometimes if I mess up a little bit, I'll go over it again with the outline. And as long as, there's no perfect way to do this, as long as the whole thing gets outlined, I will be happy. Okay. I'll let you have a little bit more time for that. If you do have a lot of cracks, which I don't think you do, um, but if you ever are making cookies and you just uh, cracks kind of happen when there is a little bit of like flat, too much flour in it or if it didn't get like kneaded enough like this was the bottom of the batch um, so it was a little bit more crumbly so if that happens a lot of times when I go to decorate it I'll just drop in a little dot of icing just so that it doesn't get that it doesn't seep under when that thin icing gets in there. All right. Try and put this a little. Okay, for the next thing, I'm gonna have y'all watch me for this. I assume that we have our outline, hopefully. Um, we are doing a wet on wet technique. So what does that mean? That means that while the white icing is still wet <clears throat> and before it's dried, we're gonna add in 
thin purple, thin green, and thin yellow. <laughs> so we're working with four icing bags pretty much at a time. And then we're gonna create those lines. And then while it's still wet, we're taking our toothpick and we're gonna drag. So we'll do lines. We'll take our toothpick and we'll drag up and then down. But I really want to show you it because it'll just make a little bit more sense um, because we're kind of working on this like time sensitive uh, thing. So it's not gonna be conducive of me to be like, okay, do this with me. And then we're like, like trying to get it all done in the short amount of time. So what I'm going to need is my thin white. That'll be the base. And then I want my thin purple, my thin green, and my thin yellow for icings. Now, I have to actually cut these bags. So I know that this one is already cut because we just used it and it's leaking out. Um, but I haven't cut these ones yet. So you could do this part with me <clears throat> if you would like, just to be prepared for the, the next time that you do it. We want thin lines. So we're actually going to cut even a smaller hole than we did with the outline. And of course, you can test it out. Like if I, I'm gonna use a paper towel. After I cut it, if I want to test the width of it, I can just go like this. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty good. That's about the, the width that I want. So now I wanna do that with my green and my yellow. So a little hole, and you can do this with me. And we're just checking to make sure that they are about the same width. That one is too small for me. So I'm going to cut a little bit more. The hardest part with this one, even though it looks really cool, <laughs> is just the preparation of it like getting these icings all set up to go. Once you've got them cut, like it's fine. It's just getting them all prepared. And then once you do it, it's not that, that bad. But we do wanna cut that tiny hole so that we've got those three colors about the same width. I mean, you don't have to be perfect, but just a little tiny hole and that is why we're doing this one first because you wouldn't traditionally flood with that small of a hole. But for this, it'll just look better if it is that small hole to get those little lines. Okay, so we've got them all cut. We know that we're ready to go. We want to have our toothpick ready and our napkin ready. Okay, so uh, watch me first. It'll just take me about two minutes, um, but I'm going to flood here first. And because it is a little time sensitive, um, I'm going to try to do this without using my toothpick. This is so hard to talk and do this. <laughs> um, it also is hard to do it with the cameras here. So I may end up using the toothpick only because I can't see all the way around. <laughs> um, so I might just use this a little bit, but again, time sensitive, so I'm really not all that worried. Um, now, I am actually going to do all of the purple lines first. Again, time sensitive. And I'm gonna probably do about four lines if I can fit them. Then I'm gonna do green next, right under. I'm leaving space for the yellow. I'm trying not to freak out. <laughs> you know, it is time sensitive, but don't freak out. <laughs> and then yellow because we do, the truth is, we do have a little bit of time that's not gonna like completely dry on us. Probably about like that. Okay, cool. Here's the fun part. You take your toothpick 
and we're going to draw these lines. Ooh, this is really hard without space. And then every time after, I'm gonna wipe it on my napkin. So I'm gonna go down, and then I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go down. So I'm just dragging this toothpick. And as to, after I drag, I'm wiping it off. And we're alternating up and down. Just like that. Messed up a little bit over here. Yeah, that one. If you do mess up, you can kind of pick it out with your toothpick a little. I probably messed up that one for good. Again, I'm working around a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so you get the concept. It's the white, then it's all the lines, and then it's dragging that toothpick up and then down and then up and then down as you move to the right or the left. You can have as many lines as you want. You can have as many uh, little, what do you call these? <laughs> little sweeps with the toothpick as you want. Um, and then hopefully it'll be fun. And it is a little bit stressful again, because you're kind of working, like you're trying to do it before that icing dries, but you do have a couple of minutes, so don't freak out. Um, go ahead and give it a try. And we will, I'll give you all some time because I know obviously y'all were watching me and you were not doing it with me. So I'll give you some time to do this here. This is, this is fun. I really do like doing the um the wet on wet the wet on wet technique is just so much fun so the reason why i wipe off every time that i pull is because i don't want like as you're pulling it you're going to get some of that icing on the toothpick and so then when you go to do another line that whatever is on the toothpick is going to drag into that next line and so i just always clean it before i do each one just to make it a little bit cleaner i mean as you can see i messed up here so and part of that was because i went back over it when it had like some icing on it um so sometimes people don't always clean it. I just clean it. It does add a little bit of time, but it does give you a little bit cleaner lines. So let me know how this goes for you. Was it stressful? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, definitely dealing with a lot of colors. It's a little bit more hectic, a little more chaotic, but hopefully not too stressful. And you probably have enough icing if you want to like completely start over. I would take like a spatula or a knife and just like scrape off the top, the whole, like scrape off everything, even the outline and the, the icing and do it again if you feel like you really messed up and you're not happy with it um you can just wipe it off completely you have enough icing to do the outline and that again um you might not have enough time if you're doing the class live but if that is you and you're taking it pre-recorded pause do what you need to do come back and join us for the next cookie <laughs> okay I'm gonna wait to see if anybody comments. If you are done, let me know that you're good to move on. And also uh, what you thought about this technique. We are gonna let this one dry. So we're not we're almost done with it, but we're not quite done with it. So we're gonna let it dry for a little bit. 
And so with that being said, you're gonna want to move it to a safe location where it's not gonna get messed up, hopefully just somewhere out of the way. And then let's do, I'm trying to think. The sprinkles are gonna be messy. <laughs> So, but I don't think there's any way around it. Um, I think what I'll do is we'll do the mask next. And then we'll get into the sprinkles and all that. So let's do the mask first or next. Okay, what's the top and what's the bottom? So, <laughs> You want it to look like mine in this orientation, but you should be able to kind of see like, the, this part down here kind of looks like the end of a ribbon. So that's the bottom. And then like, there's gonna be roses up here. Um, and then the mask is in the middle. So that. Some people will end up doing it the wrong way, like this, that's fine. But just think the smaller mountains, that's your top. Okay. So we are first going to outline it in purple because we want to let it dry before we add the details. Uh, we want to grab our thick purple, which we have not cut yet. So the thick purple, just check it, make sure it's got that Sharpie line on it, which it does. And then again, cutting that tiny hole, not too big. If you're worried about cutting off too much, cut off a little bit less. And then sometimes I kind of test it after I run my fingers, test it. I want it to be a little thicker than that off a little bit more that's about right okay so first thing we want to do is create these little footballs <laughs> for the openings of the eye mask so it's a little tricky just kind of trying to figure out like where are those eyes going to be? Somewhere in the middle, um, but symmetrical, hopefully. And you, like what I do is I just look at the middle, whatever the middle point is, or I'll even put my toothpick there. And then I'll just go a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. And I'm creating this little football of a shape here. And I don't want it to be too, too big because I still, you know, I'm, this whole thing is not my mask. Like these are the roses. So I don't want to be too far to the right because um, I want to leave room for the roses. And then I want to try to make it as symmetrical as I can. I will say that this part is not as forgiving because if I do mess up, it's, and I like choose to remove it, I might see that, like I might see where that line was, like if I scrape it off, like especially with the purple, you still have a little bit of residue, see like that. So if you do mess up and you want to erase it, just know that you might get a little bit of residue in it. Um, you could like scrape it off with your toothpick, you know? Um, but we kind of want to do it on the first try so that we really get that clean part underneath that looks like the opening of the mask. And then we'll do the rest of the mask. And as you can see from the finished product, it's going to be, I usually start at the middle of the top. 
and I'm cutting off the sides that will be my roses okay so just for you to see like that cutting off the little piece and then mirroring the same thing on the other side here just like that and we're going to cover those mistakes with that icing okay so now we get to do the flooding part here and we already have our purple icing um we cut that tiny hole so like if i'm if i were to just use it as is it would take a little bit of time so i'm gonna cut a little bit of a bigger hole here and just a little bit bigger not too much bigger and then when i go to flood i don't have to go like like I don't necessarily have to go right up to that line if I'm nervous about flooding into those eyes because we're leaving the eyes open. So I'm doing it like just the beginner way. I'm just getting close to the outline and then I'm going to rely on the toothpick to help me out here. And remember, we don't want to flood into the eyes. And if we do it the beginner way of using our toothpick a little bit more, we should not over flood. Should be good. And it won't over flood into those eyes. If you do end up putting a little bit too much icing in and you're worried that it's gonna over flood, I sometimes pick it out with my toothpick before, like if I kind of can see it's bulging over, I'll pick it out and put it like on my napkin, just catch it before it overflows. All right, so we should have one that looks Something like that. <laughs> All right. We're going to let this one dry before we add the details. So it is going to safely go where the Louisiana State one is very carefully. Just kind of move it out of the way, but try not to bump it. We want to let it dry as long as possible before we add the details because we want to add the details as late as possible before the class ends so that we have that first layer that's dry enough that it won't mess it up. However, when I'm doing cookies at home, I let it dry for about 8 to 12 hours before I put the details on. <laughs> Uh, so that's why we're just waiting like you can do it within a couple of hours. That's fine, too But we just want to make sure it dries a little bit longer before we add those details on Okay Let's um, move on to the sprinkles fun fun um, We're actually going to do our flirtily first Okay So we are hopefully going to get it to look something like this. So what we want, so you should have, or I know for a fact that you do have more of your green sprinkles than any other sprinkles. So the, there's a, you know, a reason behind that. And that's because these sprinkles are going on the king cake but they're also going on this green part right here. So you have more of the green than the other colors. 
and it might get a little messy. <laughs> so make sure you've got the green ready. And we will be needing to put on the icing first because while it's wet, then we're gonna put these on. Um, it might get a little bit messy, just fair warning. <laughs> Um, but before we do the sprinkles, let's do the outline of this green here. Okay, so what you're going to need is your thick green. Thick green. Again, you're going to cut that little hole for the outline portion. Remember, think pencil lead. Number two pencil lead. <laughs> Okay, you can test it out like I showed you. It's gonna come out a little bit watery. So I do a couple of times because just in transit, it's sometimes when it first comes out, it's going to be a little bit watery. Okay, so what you're gonna notice is it's not really a straight line down the middle. We're gonna start at the top and then we're gonna curve out and then back in okay and then we're going to come across this part's a little tricky just because we're kind of creating our own lines here but where the second bump is so you got this bump and then a second one that's where our like stopping point is here okay so i'll put my toothpick there i like to start at the top now this one if you do mess up you can erase it you can take it off do it again, but curve out and then we curve in. Once I get to that toothpick, then I'm gonna go straight across to the right. And I'll just pause there for a minute. So again, curving out at the top, curving in and then straight across. And then we will finish the outline on the right side, but just a little bit of time for you. If you don't like the way your curve is, you're not happy with it, um, again, you're going to cover all those mistakes with that thin icing. So if you want, you can just wipe it off and, and redo that, that curved line there. All right, then we'll do Finish it here just following the edge of the face. So this part's kind of easy because obviously you're just following the edge of the cookie. You're not having to make your own lines here. At the top in that small space, just make sure that you're connecting those lines there. You can use your toothpick if you need to. Just make sure that those are connected. And then if you paused at the bottom, make sure that those are connected as well. No lines or gaps. All right, this is where it's gonna get fun. <laughs> We're adding the green. So, we cut that little hole, remember, for the Louisiana, so we do want to do a little bit of a bigger hole. Just a little, not too much, just a little. And when we go to add this in, um, you might need your toothpick to get into some of the tighter corners, like at the top here. You might not be able to fit this tip, you know, all the way in, but we are going to flood with the green. And don't, you know, feel rushed here. Like, this part's really not as time sensitive. I know we're going to add the sprinkles, but don't freak out. Um, we do have a little bit of time. So just swirl it in to the outline and then sometimes I will let it dry for like a few seconds like 
I don't know, like 30 seconds before I put in the sprinkles. And that's just because um, I'm letting it harden a little bit more so that the sprinkles don't like overwhelm it and like make it over flood. Like that still is a possibility because you're adding more weight on top of the icing. So you, you your risk for over flooding can occur. So sometimes I just kind of wait a little bit before I add the sprinkles but you will want to get your green sprinkles and don't use all of them uh, because <laughs> we still need them for the king cake but you can you know what i might just like use the bag i was gonna put my fingers in it but i think i'm just gonna sprinkle them on like from the bag all right so use about like I don't know like half of them cover cover it pretty good because we're just gonna shake off whatever is like excess these sprinkles are a little bit of a different color than I advertised <laughs> that is just how they came when I bought them I was like oh those are a little bit darker um, but we are going to very carefully just kind of shake some of those off if you're the only one that is eating this cookie, you could blow it off. <laughs> For me, I am giving mine away, so I am not going to blow on it. But um, after you kind of get some of those excess sprinkles off, then we want to wipe away the ones that are on the cookie itself. And I took my toothpick and sort of like just brushed them off with the toothpick because we want to have some, we want to have that purple there without all the sprinkles. So yeah, just wiping off where that purple is going to be. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, the purpleizing is just going to go on top. Yeah. I'm gonna move some of those sprinkles. That's it. So you really don't see, you shouldn't really see the icing underneath that much. It should just be like the sprinkles, which was kind of the look I was going for. But you can add more if you need. You don't need a lot for that king cake. Just a few, so feel free to use more if you need to. Really cover that icing. Get it looking nice and pretty and textured. Okay. We are gonna let this dry for a little bit here. And while we have the sprinkles everywhere, we're going to do our king cake. <laughs> which also has lots of sprinkles. I'm going to move some of these away. Anything I do, feel free to do as well, or don't do. doesn't matter. <laughs> um, okay. King cake. Last one. Since we got all those sprinkles, might as well just continue the mess. So for this one, we're going to want our thick, white which we used in the beginning and we are going to have our thin white as well so here is what i did was i had my little like white icing kind of swirl around the outer part and the inner part and then we're going to flood it with the white and then while it's still wet, we're gonna add those sprinkles in. I would probably do this part with my fingers um, for like putting the sprinkles on. And so you'll wanna have, like I know that we have our green ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the bag so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to access those sprinkles, if that makes sense. So then, now I can just like make it like a little cup and just sprinkle. So 
messy it's so messy um <laughs> i want to have them ready so i'm going to do that with my purple where did i just put my scissors there, there. i'm going to do that with my purple and my yellow so again i'm just cutting the, the top of it to make it a little bit more accessible here and i'm putting it at the top ready to go I gave you two babies. I don't really know why. Um, <laughs> those little king cake babies, you don't have to use both of them. I really don't know why I gave you two. I guess I just felt like one was not enough. Um, <laughs> but you can do use two if you want, or just one, whatever. <laughs> okay, Oop, the baby on this one just fell off. All right, so we've got our sprinkles ready. Maybe you chose to cut them like I did so that then we can just pick out of this and sprinkle it on at, like after the white thin icing is on it. But first we have to do the outline. So I'll leave it up to you if you wanna do what I did and you, you know, kind of do these little smaller, almost kind of like a donut. Um, or it can be kind of haphazard and just sort of like randomly thrown on there. Um, but you want to have some sort of outline for the outer part. And then you also want to do the inner part because if we just leave it like this, it's all just going to fall into the middle. So we want to do a similar thing in the middle. Just make sure you've got that good barrier. Okay. So that, that icing is gonna go inside of there. And then um, I alternated, like I did purple, green, yellow, purple, green, yellow. Um, you can do, like I did three of each color, but I, you could also do two of each color, which is actually a little bit easier, um, because I'll kind of like show you what I mean by that, but it's a little bit easier to know where, like, as I was going along here, I think I just kind of got lucky <laughs> that they all ended up being about the same width, um, because I was just sprinkling them on and was like, hopefully they all fit. But when you do like two, there's kind of a technique behind it where you would cut it in half in your mind. So I'll just use the toothpick. So you would do like purple here and then yellow and green. Purple, yellow, green. So you would know half of it is gonna get the three colors and the other half is going to get the three colors. So that is a little bit easier when you're thinking about making it look a little bit more perfect. But also, if you just want to have fun with it and you're not worried about symmetry, whatever, just sprinkle them on as you go. Um, but that's just a little side note. We do want to put in that thin icing. So make sure that you have your thin white. Right, and we'll put this in. Again, we're not super concerned about the time. We're not trying to rush or stress out. Hopefully, and you will be using almost all of that icing. I'll take my toothpick and I'll do just like I've been doing. And then when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and do my sprinkles. Let's see how this works with gloves on. <laughs> take your time, put those sprinkles in. 
So I'm going with the half and half kind of look. So a little bit thicker. And you can add them on, you know, as much as you want if you want a little bit more color. What did I do? Green mix. Um, if you want a little more color or a little less, like, depends on how many sprinkles you put on. But if you want it to be, like, darker, pack on the sprinkles. Lighter, less. And then yellow. Just kind of take your time. If you go with the half, we want to be about halfway covered when we get done with that yellow. This is kind of fun. Don't you think? Sprinkles. These purple sprinkles are really pretty. It almost is like they have um, like different kind of shades of purple. Can y'all see that? It's like um, there's like a fuchsia kind of purple in it. I think I might have put a little bit too much purple on <laughs> on the uh, the one the first one. Oh well. I was going for perfection, and then that didn't work out. Okay, I've got one more color. Don't know about y'all. So that baby... <laughs> The baby is not going to stick onto it just like this because the sprinkles are, you know, getting in the way of the icing part. So if we try to put the baby on, he's not really going to stick. So we have a couple of options. We can put him on now with a little bit of icing um, under him to kind of help them stick or we can wait and we can do that when it's dry i've just been going ahead and doing it like right after so like now i would do i'm gonna do my thick one so oh i need to take them out of this little container <laughs> so we have our baby and he's purple, so I don't actually want to put him on the purple part because I feel like he won't stick out as much. So I'm going to put a little bit of icing under his little backside. Look at that little booty. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to put some icing on so he sticks. And then I'm going to put him on the yellow or the green. Let's see. Let me do this green over here so that he sticks out a little bit more. Kind of push him in a little, but he should stick all right. And hopefully that icing is not going to over flood. We did put a lot of weight, you know, we put a lot of sprinkles on the icing. So if it does over flood a little bit, it'll just sort of add to the aesthetic of a natural king cake, right? It's all good. Like, I think I'm getting a little bit of flood action over there, over flooding. But that's it. And this is your first cookie that is completely done. So, started and finished it all in one sitting. So, he can go into your box or just chilling on the side there. I'm probably just going to put him in here. I don't have a lot of space. So cute. Yay. Good job finishing one cookie. The crinkle paper out. All right. So one down, three to go. All right, we've got a big mess here. We are actually done with our sprinkles. 
So if you want to kind of, I'm probably actually going to place them in the same bag as the where the baby is. And, you know, feel free to use these. You probably will have a lot left. So if you want to make more cookies, um, you have some leftover sprinkles that you can use. Okay, and then we are going to do the fleur de lis. So let me, I know you, this is a little messy, so I'm just going to take this one off so that y'all don't have to look at all those sprinkles. <laughs> Yay, nice clean slate for the most part. All right, the bottom and the side need to get outlined and flooded. So again, for reference, that's what we're going for. So we want to finish the left side. We're gonna outline in purple and flood with the purple. And then the bottom is gonna be outlined and flooded with the yellow which we actually haven't used our thick yellow yet. So we'll want to cut that. Um, let's do let's do the purple first, um, since those are already good to go. And a lot of times what I do is I like for my, since I'm right-handed, I like to be right next to it on the right side. So I always like to have the cookie like right to the left of me. So for instance, if I'm here and I'm working, this hand is now <clears throat> over the green and so I could end up bumping it or messing it. So I just want to be free. I don't want anything over here on this right side so that when I'm moving, I'm nothing is on the butt, like underneath my hand. So that might not really be worth telling you, but it just is helpful for me when I'm doing it so that it's always right there and I've got a free spot for my hand here. If I'm right-handed, if I'm left-handed, it's gonna be the opposite. Um, so, but I'm not, I'm right-handed. So we are going to do the outline in purple here and then we're not going to hug up right next to the green. So we'll do here and then we're gonna leave it as is over where the um, green is. All the way to the top. So make sure there's no space right at that tip top. Okay, I'm just redoing that one. So, let that dry for a little bit longer. Nobody's asked any questions. I think that's probably a good thing. Nobody has any questions, concerns. All right. When you're ready, we're going to do the purple. Um, if you wanna watch me first, just on this part here, when I'm doing right up next to the green, I'm just gonna got, kinda go over some of those sprinkles there. And I should cover them. I mean, I don't think that they're really gonna like push back up to the top. But I'm just trying to kind of cover them and then I can use my toothpick a little bit if I need to sort of like push back more into that green so that I don't see the cookie underneath. But it's okay if like you can see some of the sprinkles right there. Oh, this is a really pretty purple.
if some of the sprinkles do kind of float up to the top, I'll just pick them out with my toothpick. Okay. And that's it. Sorry, I know it's really dark. But hopefully, see these colors are, they don't look this dark. Oh, that's better. They're not actually that dark. That That's more, uh, well, that's not, that's still darker than they actually are. I feel like they look so much prettier in person, all the colors. Okay. So next we'll do the yellow right on the bottom. And we don't really need to wait um, for the purple to dry for us to do this. I know that a lot of times that's contrary to what I say. <laughs> In most of my classes I say wait, you know, if the sections are touching, wait for it to dry. However, we are gonna go back over like at the end and do some little um, design here so we don't really need to let it dry we d we're not looking for that definition there so we want to get our thick yellow and then we want to cut that little hole okay Thanks for commenting, Ida. She said she's just watching now. People really, they do that. They they uh, watch um, all the way through, and then I feel so honored. Like, they watch, and then they take it again later with the pre-recorded. And I'm like, that is so sweet that you would be willing to watch me two times. <laughs> um, but sometimes people like to get, they like to get the knowledge, like, first, and then they'll take the class like they'll do it later they just want to like follow like understand the steps first which is pretty pretty cool okay so nothing fancy here we're just following the edge of this cookie with our yellow i'm gonna pour some out on a napkin first make sure that it's okay to use go and just following the outline here you can if you want come under here and do like an extra barrier here it's not necessary but some people like that we got some sprinkles And then after we let it dry for just a little bit, I mean, not too long, just about 30 seconds, then we'll go ahead and add that thin icing in. And I don't remember, oh yeah, we did. I was like, I don't know if I massaged it, but I think I did. So remember the last time we used this was for the Louisiana. So it's got that tiny, tiny hole. And we just want to make a little bit bigger hole. And then once we have that hole, we can add in this icing. I'm doing it more the advanced way where I'm not using my toothpick at all. Just getting it in without any gaps. And then uh, we're not done with this one. We've got some of the details on the top. So we'll let him dry and we'll move on. But before we do that, we're gonna take a little bit of a break here. So if you do need to catch up on anything, this would be a good time to do so if you're taking the live class. Um, let's see, where's, oh, our king cake is done. I put it in my box. So we just have these three left to detail here. We're almost done. 
And I think we're pretty good on time. Yeah. So let's take a little break. We're going to do a, um, a door prize, my favorite. And if you need to get something to drink, um, if you need to take a break, do whatever. This is a good time. Just for a few minutes here, we're really just trying to let it dry <laughs> a little bit longer, especially this yellow, before uh, we add those final touches to it. Um, we've got the heart on the Louisiana. That's it for that one. And then we have the roses and the little dots um, and the leaves on the mask and the ribbon as well. The, the mask probably has the most detail, I'd say, for the next part, like this. Um, and then for the Florida de Lee, our goal is to do uh, 2020, but uh, some people get very, very intimidated by the writing, which is totally understandable. We can practice on our parchment paper or our napkin or whatever. Um, we can practice that writing to kind of see how that goes. And then if we like the way that it looks, we can add it on the cookie. But if you opt out of it, that's fine. Um, people like writing with icing is very different than writing with a pen or a pencil. So like it kind of it's it's just tricky. Like it takes practice. Um, it takes a lot of hand-eye coordination, and we also are not using like a projector. Which if I've got like some writing, like I usually use a projector. To like trace it so we're just doing like you know authentic writing without a projector we're not tracing we're just writing it on by using hand-eye coordination which is very tricky um, but I would just say go for it I mean what do you have to lose <laughs> um, we are gonna practice you know off of the cookie and then we'll do it on the cookie once we feel good about that but um, does anybody have any questions while I'm here and we're just kind of waiting for it to dry. If so, uh, let me know in the comments and we'll do a little door prize here in a minute, which will be for all of the people who purchased a kit. And um, you will be randomly selected one person will be randomly selected from that list of people who purchase a kit and your your door prize is going to be that you will actually receive the four cookies that I decorate tonight so these four um, they will be shipped to you on Saturday to arrive by Tuesday which just so happens to be Mardi Gras um, and you can enjoy four extra cookies as a door prize. So let's go into that. Um, let me see. All right. All right, so I've got a list of names of people. And let's see, random name generator. Y'all ready? Hopefully you're away from your break. Okay, the winner is Bonnie Gaston. So Bonnie, congratulations, and you have uh, won the four cookies that I'm decorating tonight. Um, they will be shipped to you on Saturday to arrive on Tuesday for Mardi Gras. Congratulations. I don't know if she's even taking the class live, maybe. Um, <laughs> but she might watch this on YouTube and be like, oh, that's me. All right. So if you missed it in the beginning, um, I was talking about how, I think it was like a little bit, like a couple minutes before we started, that my assistants, um, they are learning about Mardi Gras 
but they didn't know what a fleur de lis was, um, and they didn't really know what a king cake was, but I educated them and now they know. And I'm like, you have to know this, <laughs> this culture. I got a shirt that uh, says, king cake calories don't count. And I have been craving a king cake. And then I was like, well, I can't find one here, um, but maybe I could like make one, but then I've just been way too busy for that. I mean, this week kind of slowed down, but the two weeks leading up to Valentine's Day, I worked 120 hours per week. So that was, yeah, that was for two weeks, was absolutely insane. Just trying to get custom orders out and Valentine pre-orders out. So I, so like, I didn't do anything but cookies. I mean, literally. So that was a little crazy, but now like this week I'm catching up on sleep. I'm, I probably have time to make a king cake, but I will tell you that sleep is more important to me right now than a king cake. <laughs> but I am excited because we're coming back to Louisiana in about two weeks and I'm coming specifically for two cookie decorating classes. So we're doing, um, one in Walker, one in Vetners, and they're both crawfish boil themed classes. And um, I'm gonna spend time with some family and friends, but I'm hoping to get like a discounted <laughs> king cake um, because I'm, I'm thinking that would be like a week and a half after. Yeah, we're coming in like a week after Mardi Gras. So I'm like, maybe I'll be able to get like a discounted one. I, I don't, I think that's a thing. I don't know if that's really a thing. But <laughs> I'm so hoping because I really miss it. Like, I love king cake so much. Oh, it's, it's bad. It's so bad. All right. Enough of my little rants. Um, I think these are good to work on. So let's do the Louisiana because we know that that one was done first. So it's probably going to be the most dry. Again, I don't usually, like when I'm doing a custom order, I don't usually do it right away, but let's see. Let's see if it's dry. You don't, you don't do this. I'll do this. <laughs> don't mess up your cookie. I'm just going to see. Oh yeah, it's, it's dry enough. Okay. The top layer is dry. It's still going to be wet underneath. So, you know, don't like touch it, like try not to touch it, even with like your icing bag, try not to poke it. But we do want to have those details on top. Um, I'm gonna show you the heart. So the heart is going about where New Orleans is, somewhat in this general area, I think, if my geography is correct. So that was like my least favorite subject in school, by the way. Um, but I put it right here and the heart is not very difficult if you do it in the way that I'm about to teach you, which you've maybe done this before if you've taken a class with me before. Um, but we're going to use our thick purple and we squeeze until we get the right width and then you drag. So you're squeezing on the left and then drag down and then squeeze on the right and drag down and you can come back over it if you need to fix it squeeze drag squeeze drag so think two teardrops and if that is too complicated for you um, you can also just sort of outline the heart and then fill it in with that same icing. Just make sure you're doing it with the icing that has a one on it. Where is it at? There it is. The Sharpie line, you can do a little heart. So squeeze and drag, or you can do a big one. It's up to you. So, Somewhere 
down here. Okay, and then squeeze and drag. Squeeze and drag. If you need to use your toothpick to sort of manipulate the shape of it, sometimes I do that too. It's still a little bit wet, so just be careful with that white icing underneath. But once we have that heart, that purple heart, this one is complete as well. So you've got two cookies done and two to go. Okay, hearts are pretty fun. I like hearts. They get, they get easier too the more that you do it. So hopefully you got a little bit of practice on your little parchment sheet. Okay. Moving on, we're going to do the mask. All right, got a couple fun things going on. So we don't have hearts, <laughs> but we do have some roses, some leaves, um, and then these little string things, which are like ribbon, which this part fell off. So I'm going to teach you how to do the roses and we're going to do the part where it's like the little ribbon um, and then I'll teach you how to do the leaves if you've never done that before. So what we first want to do is grab our thick yellow. So grab the one that has a line on it and we'll do the little roses first. Okay. So the roses are, they're not really tricky once you kind of like know what to do, but let's practice on like away from the cookie first. So what we want to do is create a drop of icing that kind of looks like a Hershey's kiss. It's bigger at the base and then we have it so that it like kind of comes off the top and like a little point at the top. I know that it's hard to see that. I don't know if I can tilt it. So kind of you see how it's sort of like a Hershey's kiss. <laughs> it's like it's not flat it's up. And we do sort of want to let it dry a little bit. so that when we add the little spirals, it'll kind of keep its shape a little bit. Like the spirals, we don't want to just like mesh into the, um, the base part. So I'm gonna do exactly like I would do on the cookie. So like on the right side, you've got two of the Hershey's Kisses. Then I would take my green, my thick green, and I'm, while I'm waiting for this to dry, We'll just do some little squiggles here. And it'll, you know, you'll see them on the cookie where it's gonna be. But I'm just sort, sort of like showing you what this is gonna look like once we do it on the cookie. And we would do both sides. Okay, and then for that spiral, you're going to start in the middle at the top. So you're gonna start in the middle at the top, you're letting that icing just kind of fall and we're going to spiral from inside to outside as we go up to down. So it, that's a little confusing. So you're spiraling up to down, in to out. So you can watch me first. I start in the middle, I pull it up and then I'm just going to let it spiral down as I go out. I know that it might be a little bit hard to see here on Facebook, but we want to get these little spirals. Okay, so again, since you have that Hershey's Kiss, you're starting at the top, you're letting it fall, and then you're just, once it catches, you're just letting it spiral down. But because you have 
that height to the icing dot, you can kind of go like from up to down and around. Okay. So now let's try that on the cookie. Okay. So the two, they're going to go here. There's going to be one. This is the first um, spot up here is the leaf. So we're going to do one here. We're kind of overlapping onto that purple a little bit. And then the bottom one here. So you should kind of see like two defined bumps right here. And that's where those are going to go. So first we do our dot. We get that shape that we want. And then we're going to add some to the top. Make sure you get that Hershey's Kiss looking shape and we'll get two of them. They can be the same size. We just want to let them dry for a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing over here. Again, I typically rotate it so that I'm not like over that cookie, but here we see this is going to be the leaf up here and then we have this bump here. that rose make a little Hershey's kiss and then the second one here bring it back here okay while we're waiting for those to dry do our little spirals so you've got two start at the rose and then you just kind of move your hand side to side as you come down. Side to side. You come down. Um, I'm going to do the dots on the mask with the yellow, like the finished one. And then I'm also going to do the leaf. So I'll teach you how to do the leaf part here. Um, but first I want to do a couple of other things. I'm kind of waiting. I'm just wanting to wait as long as possible for that yellow to dry to really get that spiral look. So that's that's what we're trying to do, is just wait a little bit longer. So let's do the thick yellow. Okay, the thick yellow, make sure it's got that line on it. And we're gonna do four dots in the middle, right between the eyes. Four little dots. So for the dots, you squeeze until you get the right width that you want and then you just pull up as you like you stop squeezing and then you pull up sometimes i use my toothpick to flatten it a little bit or make it more circular if i need to toothpicks work wonders however uh, you can also get a cookie scribe, which I actually make them now. They're really fun to make. Um, they're just metal, so they're not disposable. You can use them again and again. But I have in my um, website shop, I've got some like wine themed ones as well as um, LSU Tiger ones that I made. And so sometimes I use those, but for a class I use the toothpicks because that's what I gave you. <laughs> We're still waiting for the yellow to dry. I also went back over, I don't know if you can tell on this one, I went back over the purple outline to make it look a little cleaner. So sometimes what people call it, like when they take my class is they say, oh, you're going back over the outline, like you're doing the outline again, because that's essentially what it is, is you're doing that same like outline um, but it does make it kind of cleaner. It makes it come together. I know people who do this for all of their cookies. Like they re-outline everything. 
because they really like want that sort of like defined like cleaner look and it is nice if you mess up like on the outline and then you kind of cover it by re-outlining it so I don't do it on every single one but I did do it on this one so we're just going to take our purple our thick purple and then like we'll start over here I skipped like the roses but I re-outlined basically everything else and then I just sort of like left room where the roses were and sort of re-outlined to make it look a little like more finished a little cleaner and then if you feel confident to do the little eyes that that's a little bit tricky re-outlining it again it just kind of makes it look a little cleaner a little bit more defined really makes it like pop out it's like the mascara of cookies <laughs> just makes it go there it is you know um almost done we'll do the the leaves and then we'll finish with the roses all right so the leaves actually i'm trying to think do we need this one yes we do we can't cut this bag yet actually because i wanted to use it for one part of the fleur-de-lis so let's just like be working on both of them here for a little bit and all we need it for the fleur de lis like before we cut it is just this bottom part here so let's do this first and then we'll do the leaves so we're going to re-outline as people say <laughs> the bottom right side of the yellow so we're going to start at the tip and then we'll meet back up so we're just re-outlining this part here till you get to the green and then you'll stop just that okay So once you do that, I just wanted to use it just to be able to get the green detail done so that I can cut it the way I need to. Because if I cut it the way I need to, then I won't be able to, like I'll have a leaf one instead of a thin one and you can't do the leaf cut to do that detail. So, okay. Leaves are so much fun. <laughs> But it is in all, it's all in the way that you cut it. So if you cut it, if you follow my directions to a T and you cut it the right way, you will get great leaves. Um, the only thing I would say is that I probably didn't make this as thick as I needed to. So your leaves might not be as defined, but um, I kind of weigh the pros and cons. And to me, like you're still gonna get the technique. You might not get them super defined, but it would have been harder to detail and to outline if it was thicker. So I opted out and just made it a little bit thinner, like a regular consistency. Like usually for leaves, you want a little bit of a thicker consistency than like your standard thick. So there's like thick, really thick, thin, and medium. So the really thick is usually like leaves, but I just went with the thick so it might not keep its shape as much. Uh, but it is all in the way that you cut it. So I'm going to show you step by step, follow along. And if you do it the way that I do it, you should get great leaves. But we'll see, right? <laughs> Hopefully you get great leaves. Okay. So looking at the icing bag, we have a seam in that bag. Okay. We want that seam to be facing us and going right down the middle. So is it facing you? And does it right down the middle okay so now 
we push that icing back because we want a flat tip to cut. And again, we want this seam to be perfectly down the middle. Even when we, you know, lay it flat and we're pushing that icing back, we want this to be totally flat. We want that seam right down the middle. Okay, now you're gonna cut it twice and we're gonna cut two cuts diagonally. So first cut is going to be and it's going to be small, like we want small leaves because this is a small area. So we want this to be small. So we don't want to be chopping off. Like if I'm all the way up here, I'm going to get huge leaves. I want to be snipping off just a tiny amount to get a tiny leaf. So we go from each side diagonally. You're going to cut from this side to the seam. And then you're going to cut from the other side to the seam, which is hard to show you, but, or to, from the seam to the outside. So I lay it flat. I'm going to cut one cut from the outside to the seam. Oh, and it just, <laughs> oh man, I just accidentally, <laughs> whoops cut the live connection. Of course I did. This doesn't matter to people on YouTube, but okay. Am I back? <laughs> I thought I just cut it, but I think I'm back. I don't know what just happened. Something went wrong. Please check your stream's connection. Am I still there? Can somebody comment if you still see me? Am I still on? <laughs> I'm going to pause. I'm not going to move on until... So if you're on YouTube, obviously it's not going to have this because I'm uploading the streaming, the recording video. So just fast forward <laughs> if you need to or hang tight with me um, because it just cut out. We'll get it fixed. Can anybody see and hear me? Hmm. Sorry y'all, I, I don't know what I'm seeing is probably different than what you're seeing. So if somebody could comment if you are watching the class and let me know <laughs> that you still can see me. Oh, let's see. Oh, you never lost me. What in the world? That's so weird. I'm so sorry. Okay. That's weird. Okay, so thank you Ida and Sherry for letting me know. All right, so we have our one cut, and then we cut the other side. So sometimes I have to flip it around, actually, um, because it's hard, like, just the way that I'm pointed directionally. So I want to go from the seam to the outside, and I want them to be symmetrical so that when I look at it, I've got the same cuts on the right and the left. So it is a little bit tricky just kind of like seeing, you want it to be perfect because if you are if you have it perfectly, then like you're gonna get perfect leaves. So I can see looking at mine that the one on the left side is like coming up a little shorter and this is just like such a perfectionist in me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me, Cut a little bit more so that it's a little bit more symmetrical here. And it might not be perfect and that's okay too. But once I go to actually do it, I'll know, like I'll know if I need to cut more or not. So once you have your cut, you should have it look like this. The seam is down the middle and then you've got those two cuts there. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it with my wrist lying flat. So I'm not up here like I would normally do with the outline. I'm down here with my wrist lying flat and that seam is facing me right down the middle. So that when I go to outline, I mean to do the little leaves, I'm squeezing and then I'm pulling straight out. And what I can tell you right now is I cut off too much. And that's fine because I gave you extra bags. So if, if your leaves kind of look like this, like my smallest one would be like that. <laughs> um, that the small one is fine. It all depends on how much you squeeze out. Like if you squeeze out a lot, you're gonna get bigger leaves. You can practice these. Leaves are really fun. But if I do like a small one, I'm gonna squeeze and then pull out pretty much right away. Like I'm not going to sit there and squeeze because I don't want them to be really big. But if I did cut it the right way, you should kind of get these leaves that look like leaves and not just, you know, like blobs. However, um, the icing is not as thick again, so you're not gonna get as much definition but we wanna just make sure we have our wrist lying flat. And then what we're gonna be doing is one uh, leaf on the top and then one on the other. So you just squeeze and pull. So if we wanna do it on the mask, we've got two leaves on the top. Okay. So here, where that space is, Squeeze and pull, just remember squeeze and then pull straight out. And then kind of overlapping that leaf, do one on that side. The smaller, the better, if you can. I'm gonna turn him so that I can be at the right angle here. I'm gonna go squeeze, pull. And then sort of overlapping, squeeze, and pull. So you still do get those defined leaves with this icing. And then the last thing we're going to do is um, the spirals on the roses. I didn't forget. <laughs> Just been a little while since that. And I'm sorry for thinking that the, the um, thing went out. Um, I think maybe it did go out. That's so weird because I think somebody did say that it went out. Okay, you know, whatever. When you're dealing with live streaming, something's bound to happen, I'm telling you. It always happens. All right, so we've got four roses that we want to do. So remember, you're going to spiral in to out and make sure you're letting that icing just kind of like drag down. So you don't want to be touching it with the tip of your bag. You just want to let it spiral down. Start in the middle, at the top, and then spiral out and down. Out and down. You just kind of tuck that little end part, like whenever <clears throat> you're done, you can just kind of tuck it in or you can use your toothpick to sort of like mush it, mush it, smush it into, <laughs> melt it into, I don't know, my vocabulary sometimes is not great. Kind of blend it into, there we go, the rest of it. All right. Third cookie is done. We're almost out of time. I told you it would take two hours and it is almost exactly two hours. So the roses are fun. Um, the leaves are fun. Hopefully you had fun with those. You can play with the leaves. I sometimes, it's very therapeutic <laughs> just to take this icing bag and do like a bunch of leaves. Cause you notice like depending on the effect that you're going for, you can like sit here, you can ruffle them. Um, like it's just so much fun. You can make like super big leaves. Like it's awesome. I love leaves so much. All right, let's
put this one in a safe spot. This one is done. And we only have one more. And I think I'm going to get another parchment paper. All right. Because this one's a mess. Okay, the last thing we have to do is the fleur de lis. We're going to attempt the writing. <laughs> I say attempt. People, some people get very frustrated with the writing. Don't get frustrated, it's all good. All right. So first what we'll do is the part with the purple here. It's very pretty. I'll show you a couple of techniques here. So we're going to re-outline the other left half here with the dark purple. Make sure it's the thick one. So we'll just re-outline here just like you did with the green. Then I'll show you the part that goes right down the middle there. That's kind of fun. It's sort of similar to the, the hearts with like the teardrops, but not like side by side, like just one line. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll practice the writing. We'll do the writing and then we'll be done. <laughs> so let me show you right here. So if this line right here were to be the uh, sort of like, I don't know if you can see it on my parchment paper, if that were to be like where the cookie is, what we want to do is go from the left to the right if you're right-handed or the right to the left if you're left-handed. And you're going to, I'm going to try to make this a little bigger, but you're going to squeeze and then you're going to drag. So you're creating this teardrop and then you're going to squeeze sort of close to the drag and then drag. Squeeze and drag. Squeeze and drag. Squeeze. So, of course, I'm trying to make it bigger for you to see it, but it's, it's not going to be that big. We're just looking to kind of like basically cover the line. So we're squeezing till we get like a good width and then we're dragging. And then right at like the end of the drag, then we squeeze it again. So try that on your parchment paper. So you feel, you know, like pretty confident. Squeeze and drag, squeeze and drag. And then we'll do that on the cookie here. I think it'll be about like six squeeze and drags. So we go squeeze and drag, squeeze, drag. How's that? It's all right. It's kind of fun, right? Okay, now for the writing. <laughs> 2020. However you want to do this, if you want to do cursive um, letter, I mean numbers, you could do like this like at a slant not my best work <laughs> I usually just opt to doing like sort of block numbers 2020 take a moment to practice on your parchment paper kind of what you want it to look like and you know if it ends up looking decent. We can do it on the cookie. But sort of just just do a few here. Because once it's on the cookie, we can't really, you know, if we mess up, we can't correct it. So we want to feel kind of confident. 
if, you know, to do it off of the paper first. And then that's going to fit in the middle. So like right here. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, sometimes what I do is again like just for reference I'll cut this in half so then I know 20 should be on one side and 20 should fit on the other side. Like I'm not going to keep it there but just for like my visual reference to be able to see okay 20 on one side 20 on the other side. So um, if and when you're ready and you <laughs> want to do this with me um, let's go ahead and add the 2020 and I'm going to try my best in front of or in back of this camera to get it to look decent. I often don't talk when I'm doing the writing part because this is definitely the hardest part I would say. Even for me. So I've got 20. I think it's pretty much on the left half side. And then another 20. It's like, remember to breathe. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. And then I'll use my toothpick. If I feel like I can manipulate it in any way to make it look a little bit better by like pushing or pulling the icing just a little. So whew, there you have it. I'm hoping yours turned out well and that you went for it and um, felt, you know, confident in it. <laughs> but there is our Fleur de Lis with our 2020 writing. Writing is not easy by any means. Um, but that is it. And we completed four cookies in about two hours. Um, thanks so much for joining me. If you took it with the kit and were doing it alongside me, I hope you had fun. Um, if you're taking it <clears throat> on YouTube, I hope that you had fun and went at your own pace. Um, if you were just watching and just stopping in to see what this is all about, cool. Glad to have you and um, that'll be it for tonight. So thank you so much again. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, obviously, you're probably following me on Facebook if you're here. <laughs> um, but uh, we have another virtual class, a spring one. And tomorrow I'm posting a St. Patrick's Day one that we're going to have in a couple of weeks. I decided to add it. It's a little bit last minute, um, but that one will be like the middle of March, just um, like a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day. So I'll add that one tomorrow, be on the lookout. And if you're in Baton Rouge and you, or Walker, Louisiana, you wanna come to that Crawfish Boil class, I still have a few tickets left. So um, thank you so much. Uh, have fun with the Mardi Gras if you're doing anything. Stay safe and I'll see y'all next time. All right, bye.